one of the things I've realized talking to people is everybody has heard of the word climate change. But when I asked them to describe it to me or tell me what it is, uh, not many are able to. So the one thing we want to build is awareness. So I'm going to go through each of you and ask you to define climate change in, say, two minutes. I'll give you my very idiotic, non-aware description of it. Sun emits rays. Each surface on the planet reflects differently the rays back. I think it's called albedo. I remember it using the word albino. When the heat is going back, it gets trapped in the atmosphere by virtue of more carbon dioxide, more methane, more water vapor, whatever, and the temperature rises. But I want each of you, in your own words, describe climate change for me. Some definition will resonate with somebody. Should we start with Navroz? Maybe let's start with, with Mirik. I'm curious yeah. to see how we... So climate change is this uh, system in which the rate of change in the temperature on ocean acidification and the other parameters that impact any locality is higher than the ability of the people or organisms in the locality to adapt. That's a good definition. Mm, that's a nice way to put it. Navroz? Well, look, I, so I, I don't want to repeat what Mirik has said. On mm -hmm. this, on the, I think he's explained the science mm. uh, of it really well, right? But I think the key point is this, that it, it, to pick up on this point about the rate of change, we are now, the earth is now warmer on average than at any point it's been in the last 100,000 years. Mm -hmm. If you look at any of the graphs, you just see this incredible spike right in the last 30, 30 40 years. Mm. Right? And you're and able to correlate that with human involvement. Absolutely. More and carbon, me, hotter that, temperature. That's right. So since so you asked me about the IPCC, let me explain a couple of the quite amazing science, bits of science behind this. But I, what I really want to get to is actually to move away from the scientific definition of climate change. My own definition won't be around science. But let me give you a couple of uh, uh, examples. So one of the ways in which we know that, and you're completely right, right? We've had these cycles, the earth has warmed, cooled, et cetera, et cetera. But there have been massive disruptions to life on earth associated with each of these things. So we say it's natural, sure it's natural, but the disruption is also natural and it affects us now uh, uh, as a species. So one of the things we've done is we look at ice core data, right? So they take literally cores of ice, digging deep down into the earth. So the deepest is the Vostok ice core data, goes back 800,000 years, mm. right? The ice core has kind of rings because every layer of snowfall has a distinct pattern. Mm. So they can count how old that ice is. Then they look at the air bubbles trapped mm. in that ice. They call it sedimentation or something like That's that. That's right. Yeah. So the air bubbles that are trapped in there allows them to say what was the percentage of carbon dioxide mm. at that point. Uh, a lot of climate skepticism in the US. Mm -hmm. Very, very little in India. Mm -hmm. And it's also the case. That Is it been also lots because of systematic... less climate dialogue in India? Well, I don't think that's actually the reason. I mean, there's been systematic efforts that has been documented now at mm. disinformation campaigns, right? By fossil fuel companies. That's a more likely uh, uh, explanation. But just going back to this Vostok stuff. So you have, so you know the carbon dioxide, you know the temperature when the snowfall fell, you can map them. And you see this one-to-one -one relationship. Every spike in carbon dioxide, spike in temperature. So we know the two are really closely associated, okay? Now, what have we done more recently? These incredibly complex climate models that have been refined over time, and you'll see this in the IPCC. They say, all right, let's run the climate model as if the science of climate change was fake, was false. And you see the temperature record. So they, you know, and they map it to the previous temperature. They calibrate it against the previous temperature. And it basically looks like it's more or less, it doesn't change, right? Then they say, now let's apply it to what we think is the science of climate change and look at what it looks like, right? And it edges upwards. And then they map real data on top of it. And the real data and the models are a near perfect match. So we've become, become pretty good at actually representing the science. I can think I carry a counter narrative yeah. because somebody has to? I'm like scared to get to the point where we all say the same thing. As long as you <laughs> get to the social part and not yeah. just the science part. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay. Okay, first thing, I don't understand the science, but I'm going to ask you questions about it. Uh, I really want to know why does carbon dioxide, for example, stay in the atmosphere for 300 years, whereas methane is only around for 15 years, all mm -hmm. of that. 
But people also do say that the kind of radiation that carbon dioxide is blocking is near peak and more carbon in the atmosphere might not significantly uh, mean more heat. Is there any logic to that? Look, I, so I'm, I'm going to let Merrick weigh in as the, as the sort of engineer in the bunch. My own take on this is I, the, the science of this is so incredibly complicated, right? For example, there were arguments put out about clouds and what effect the clouds would have. And when you add up all of those things, and you, so, so, so as a layperson, I don't think any of us can apply our own mind to the collective of the problem because there's so many dimensions of it, right? So there's the oceans and the atmosphere and the interface between them. 90% of the excess heat is sitting in the oceans. Mm. There's the ocean cycles, mm. right? There's the various gases. You said carbon dioxide, methane, different lifetimes. And I couldn't honestly tell you exactly what the atmospheric chemistry is of why there are diff these different durations. This is the kind of area where you have to look at professional scientists and say, give us a good synthesis mm. and give us evidence, right? As to why you're coming up with the conclusions that you have. And the IPCC, so I've been in that process, right? Every chapter, my chapter, had 1,200 comments times three in three rounds of review. So the best that we have is critical scientific review. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. But it catches a lot of errors, mm. right? And you're now at the stage where very, very few people will disagree. And most of the, and some of the people who disagree tend to be, um, uh, have vested interests, frankly, mm. behind this. And this has been documented with the fossil fuel industry actually funding uh, uh, disinformation around, around climate science. So I think, we, I think we are really, we haven't got to this yet, we have also seen an incredible slew of impacts. This is the warmest year on record right. by some margin, right? So, so we have the models and we have the science, we have the theory. We now have the observations. I mean, the, if you look at the graphs of the Antarctic sea ice mm. and its mm. melt, if you look at the graphs of the ocean temperatures, which is the really worrying thing, because as I said, 90% of the heat is in the ocean. Mm -hmm. Things are way out of whack. And water expands when it's heated, right? So that's part of the sea level rise story. But the, but, the, but the really thing that's really alarming people is, is the ocean's ability to absorb the excess carbon mm. dioxide now reaching some sort of limit, mm. right? Which means you're going to see more of it in the air, right? So just look, in, let's look at India, just look, at, look globally at what we've seen uh, 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 this year, right? So we had a flood in Libya. Mm somewhere between 5,000 to 10,000 people died. Yes. It was 200 times the rainfall that is expected for that period. There's now science, which is called attribution science, that says, how likely would that have been in a non-climate warming world? And the answer is, it's 50 times more likely in a climate warming world. So we saw that in Libya. We saw wildfires in Canada. We saw wildfires in Hawaii. We've seen floods in Himachal. We've seen the Yamuna yeah. reaching a 45-year peak. I mean, it's just cascading evidence. Yeah. So I sort of feel like we kind of have to move on. So what is Navroz's 60 second definition of climate change? Okay. So I'm going to take the science as given for yeah. all the reasons I've yeah. told you. To me, and this comes back to Bhumi's point, climate, we have to get away from thinking about climate change as a, as a abstraction. Climate change is now a social and political reality mm that is going to have to change the way in which human beings organize our economies and our societies, both to reduce emissions, as well as to adjust to what are now inevitable harms. And we need system level changes for this. It's not marginal changes in how we produce things, in how we consume, really, really important in how mm. we consume, and how we build our, uh, 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 in particular, our cities. Okay. Who would like to go next? Bhumi, what is climate change? I'll keep it very simple. Our planet's heating up. Everything that Mirik and Navro said, I completely resonate with it. 2023 was the hottest year in many, many thousands of years. The year before that, 2022, we were at a 1.2. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Pre-industrial uh, temperature, which is a lot. I think what people fail to understand is that we think, huh, 
1.4 degrees higher hi to hai but that 1.4 degrees is going to have an effect like what we saw in libya what we saw in himachal what we saw in australia uh, Uh, in, the, in, in the in the wildfires where like over a billion animals were wiped out there were thousands and thousands of people at that lost their homes livelihoods there were so many that died what happened in hawaii you know the oceans are heating up we are also going to have mass extinction when our where our marine species are concerned you know i i just feel like as a human race we forget many a times that we share this planet you know it's not ours alone there are so many other species that we share it with and i have a very empathetic take on it because i just feel like um for me climate change is about adapting to newer ways of living it is a reality that we are living in today and it's only going to get more adverse and it's only going to get tougher i want to be extremely optimistic about it you know because that's the tone that I think that's what the messaging needs to be that it's not that it's the end of the world but we have reached a tipping point and when we speak of 2030 we are literally 7 years away from it 6 years away from it <laughs> yeah we are literally 6 years away from it Sunita climate change <laughs> it's all been said so <laughs> yeah but for me I but mean, I'll tell you this is such yeah. a curious thing because yeah. we asked a whole bunch of people like a lot of them yeah and everybody had heard climate change climate change but nobody could describe what okay. it is and it's such a important thing yeah. before you start worrying about something you have to be cognizant to what it is in a way right so we hope we are able to tell a lot of people through this in a very simple mm, way enough. what is climate change no, it's a good very good question because and we've heard it i mean different thing we've got the full picture here mm. i mean if i was to wrap this up i would simply say that um you know there there is something that we take for granted which is things that we use largely mm. fuel that we burn fossil fuels um oil gas um everything that makes our world so good that we have found today is emitting um a substance called carbon dioxide which has a very long life so unlike say the emissions that you have in your city which are bad but those are short lived mm. so you know you have particles but they if you clean up if you can get some wind and if you and they have a natural life but carbon dioxide has a very long life now that is filling up our atmosphere and it's as mirik said i mean to me the most evocative image is that earth has got a blanket on it and so that all those gases are being trapped and as a result of it you're getting temperature increase happening now your point about donald trump and vivek ramaswamy and all the rest in terms of saying but this is everything we are seeing is natural variability the fact is yes uh, there is natural variability in weather we've always had floods we've always had droughts we've always had an a landslide a, you know lightning strike but what you are seeing now and is the intensity and frequency of those events like never before and i can only tell you from my personal experience that in 1992 in rio when we talked about climate change we basically knew it was something that would happen in the future and we knew it was called climate change but what would happen was something that the models were telling us would happen okay we're living it today and we're living it today with 1.1 degree centigrade rise yeah, post um Industry. 1850 1880 okay 1.1 mm. okay if we get to 1.5 just think mm. about it so we do something called um extreme weather database and we put together all the extreme weather events as defined by imd and um and then produce a report at the end of each year it's one extreme weather event a day Mm. a day as defined by imd it's not my definition yeah. of extreme weather ev- event extreme rain lightning strike flood drought uh, all the extreme weather that imd has a the imd uh, is the indian met department i think that's something everybody knows okay but imd definition it's one a day in india 
Now, if you did the same for the rest of the world, I think even a Donald Trump or a Vivek Ramaswamy would find it very difficult to argue against climate change. I think before we put carbon dioxide on this villainous thing that it's a bad thing, greenhouse gases are actually very important. Otherwise, yeah. life on Earth wouldn't have Won't existed. Yeah. 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 So I think it's the balance part of it. Exactly. This amount of greenhouse gases, because just to give you some numbers, if there was no greenhouse gas on the same logic, the Earth's average temperature would have been 30 degrees lesser than what it is and it practically wouldn't have any life. So, mm. I think the context is the right amount for us, for the last 100,000 years that has happened, to go further. Right. Uh, rather than just saying, okay, it's… Yeah. Hi, I'm Nikhil Kamath. I'd love to know what you thought of the episode. Uh, comment, like and subscribe and thank you for watching.